Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, A Better Way to Find an Alternative Career with Career Coach Markel Morris. My name is Joseph Blancas and I serve as an Assistant Director for Alumni Career Engagement at UCLA Alumni Affairs. In today's program, you will learn how to define your career goals and preferences to attract a better opportunity and a career that you're truly excited about. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank our Alumni Association sustaining donors. It's with your help that we are able to strengthen the Bruin community with career programs like this. For some general webinar housekeeping, we'll have time at the end of our program for a Q&A with Markel. So please use the Q&A function below to submit your questions. We'll also be recording the event and we'll send it out once it's made available. Now to start our program, I'm excited to introduce Markel Morris. Markel is a speaker, career counselor, and job search coach. Known for empowering her clients from a place of possibility and abundance, she has spent her award-winning career motivating and guiding people in search of direction and advancement. Her work with major cities and universities covers topics such as career motivation and success, career assessment, career exploration, effective job search strategies, and career transition for adults evaluating their career paths after a loss and life-altering personal challenge. She is a national certified counselor and among the first career counselors nationwide to become a distance credentialed counselor. I'll turn it over to Markel now to start our program. Hello, so you can see my screen. I just need to put it on slideshow. Can you see it? It's not showing up. Let me try this. I'm, I was having some challenges earlier. We, we were able to see it. It's just loading a bit. Is it? Okay. So there you go. There you go. Oops. All right. Thank you um, so much, Joseph, for um, providing me with that wonderful introduction. I'm just going to get it started right. Here we go. Bear with me. All right. Here we go. Can you, you can see um, my slides there? Yes. All right. Great. So I, um, as Joseph mentioned, I'm a career counselor and a job search coach, and I work with a range of, of different clients who are established in their careers, and I've developed programs and coaching programs uh, that help my clients really um, embrace the, the, the path that they, they want to have in their life and their career. And I have a particular you know, interest and focus in working with um, people who've experienced unexpected loss and life-altering um, personal challenges. So perhaps they have experienced an unexpected separation from their employment, or they've received a medical diagnosis that they're navigating, or they lost a close family member. But really what they're seeking when, they, when I work with them, when they come to me, is they're seeking a greater sense of purpose and meaning. And so I help my clients to redefine their career goals, figure out ways that they can combine their natural strengths and interests into a meaningful and lifestyle, uh, satisfying lifestyle and then develop a personal stra uh, strategy to get there. And I'm really, um, really energized and excited to help people uh, do this. It's been um, my life work in my career and I'm gonna share with you uh, how I do that. So, before I jump in, I'd like to get a sense uh, from you about what is your biggest challenge. And you can um, post, post that in the, the chat, the number that corresponds to what resonates most with you. So quite often um, when I work with clients who are, experience, who are wanting to make a career change, they have primary challenges. One is perhaps they have no idea uh, what they wanna do next, or perhaps they have a lot of interests in a lot of different areas and they're not really sure which one to go after, or perhaps they do have an idea of what they wanna do, but they don't know how to find openings uh, for those type of jobs that they'd be interested in, or they're just simply overwhelmed by everything um, that they think they need to do to get the, the job or the career that they want. So which ones resonate uh, with mostly with you? One and two, I see some twos, one and three, mm -hmm. four, mm-hmm. Retired, so okay, I've had some work with clients who are retired as well. 
So those are some common challenges that uh, people face in uh, thinking about a career change, whether they're uh, pursuing advancement or redirecting their career laterally or looking for something completely new or moving into um, re retirement age. So, uh, or retirement age, whatever that is, but when they're looking at what they wanna do after um, their uh, paid career perhaps. And I wanna just share with you a little bit of, of really briefly about my career journey, just to give you some context for what, what I'm going to be talking about. So throughout my career, I've, I've been in, in my career for over 20 years. And while I've been, I'm a career practitioner, career counselor, career coach, there have been times where I've had to, where I've faced my own career transitions. And in some cases, I initiated a career change. In other cases, life circumstances or career circumstances happened and I had to figure out where to, what, where to go from there. And so I've had this experience navigating careers, the joys and the, the challenges in that. And because I've been, done this myself, I had to come up with ways to figure it out. Even as a career counselor, even knowing all the tools and having all the resources at my disposal, I still felt at times really stuck and overwhelmed in this. And so I came up with some different ways to make it easier for me to not only figure out what I wanted to do next, but also to, give, to get the confidence that I would need to take those steps. And so because I have learned how to do this well, I know the strategies work and I'm passionate about teaching people how to do this so that they can apply it to their own situations. So they can, I think we all deserve to have a career that is meaningful to us. So I have a question that I would like for you to all consider as we go through. How, how can I, um, how can I uh, cre create a lifestyle, oops, create a lifestyle that incorporates what matters most to me? That is a core question that people um, will ask. And perhaps many of you are asking this question in some form or fashion. Sometimes it looks like I really want to um, feel like my work has meaning. I really want to feel like my, my work and my career is making a positive impact. Oh, and while I'm making a positive impact, I also want to get paid well. <laughs> and I want to have a job or a career that supports the lifestyle that I want. And I want to have a little bit of fun while I'm doing all of this. And oh, and I want to be able to do this on my own terms. So this is a very common uh, question that career changers are trying to answer. And perhaps this you can relate to this as well. The challenge is, right, that you don't know how to get there. You don't know what steps that you need to take to get there. You've heard you know, advice from perhaps different people, but you're not really um, sure how to pull all the pieces together. And I'm, I, I was inspired for this particular topic by uh, being in a professional group. A, a colleague of mine uh, invited me to be a part of this group. And this is a group of highly trained, uh, highly skilled, um, highly educated uh, healthcare professionals. And every day people are coming into this group asking what else they can do with their knowledge, skills, and abilities. They were burned out, overwhelmed, and looking for other options. And the wonderful people in the group often will provide a long list of ideas of all the things that a person could do and maybe even job leads. And on the surface, it's like, oh, wow, this is really great. There's a, this is a very helpful community. But all too often, important, um, important factors were overlooked. And so people would take all of this information, they get overwhelmed, and they wouldn't know what to do with it. And so they would, they would get over frustrated with this. And what was missing is that it partially, their approach was, what else can I do? Well, they weren't interested in doing what they were doing anymore. And so it would be better and more beneficial to shift a little bit in the question and, and take some time to, to evaluate what they really want to do. And so I see this all the time. I see this approach played out every day and people are getting frustrated and feeling defeated. And so I wrote an article about it and I share that article every chance that I get, but what I'm gonna do with today is I'm going to uh, share those strategies. So a better way to find an alternative career, and again, this is not prop anything you might not have heard already, but these are sort of the three critical areas to, to focus on. One is to, to define your career goals. 
and then to explore or research the op options or so that you can get a reality check about real places where you can do work that you enjoy, that's meaningful, that pays you well, and then to create a plan for success. So that's what I'm gonna to cover today. And then you're gonna have an opportunity to ask some questions at the end. This is the basic framework that I use with my clients to, to help them to envision and imagine and empower them to go after a career, an alternative career that's going to be aligned with the uh, vision that they have for their life and their career. So I'll, I'm gonna share this framework with some specific strategies. So I want, to, I want you to give this question some thought. If you could change careers right now and do anything you want, what would your uh, new career or job be? Think, give that some thought as, as I go through um, the, the rest of the webinar. There have been times uh, in, my, in my career where I've been able to answer that question really easily. But more often than not, when I've asked myself this question at transition points, it's been really hard. I, I really couldn't say what I wanted to do. I could say what I didn't wanna do, but I couldn't always really clear, clearly articulate what it was that I wanted to do in uh, my next job or in my next career, my next opportunity. So give this some thought. And if you know this, I'd be happy to hear this at the end. So the first thing that you would want to do to help you to get some clarity around that question is to get, uh, is to focus. And one of the other uh, challenges that I see that people face is looking for the next in job titles. And I encourage you and I encourage my clients to go beyond the job titles and define what you really want so that you can be less overwhelmed. When you know what you want, um, it feels a lot less like you have to do a whole lot of different um, activities and take a lot of different actions. When you, when you are a little bit less clear and you try to uh, look for that next um, specific job opportunity to do all the networking and you, maybe you're going on, on interviews, it feels that you're pulled in many different directions and you can feel really overwhelmed and discouraged. So this will give you a, a place to start. And when I'm working with uh, career changers and I encourage career changers to use a combination of, of approaches. One is a reflective approach and the other is by using um, career assessments. So in the reflective approach, you might ask yourself these kinds of questions and, and feel free to um, take a screenshot here. But I like to, I, I would encourage you uh, as you're considering many of you, I have no idea what I wanna do or I have some ideas what I wanna do, but I'm not, I, I'm not really sure how to pull the pieces together and take some time to really reflect on these types of questions. And these are what if questions, uh, if you could change one thing, if you could change tomorrow, um, if you could do anything, if you could be, uh, be anything, have the be endowed with the personality characteristics, whatever it may be, the skills that you need. Um, and if you could have anything, and, and you can take a screenshot if you like, um, of this, but take some time really to reflect. And this is an example of some of the questions that you might ask yourself and that I encourage you. I have, I have gone through questions like this for myself and I've guided people through questions like this. And that you, it, I can't um, underscore how powerful it is to give yourself the opportunity to reflect. Because what often happens is that people will over, have overlooked really getting in tune with what they want. Uh, if you think about the start of your career, maybe similar to mine and many others, you, you perhaps um, were provided with an opportunity based off of something that you could do. Someone found out that you maybe had this degree or you had this particular skill that gave you an opportunity. You did well with that and you continued going along your career until you woke up one day and you said, wow, I'm not really energized by this any longer. And you may have lost sight of, of what really brings you joy in your work. And this will enable you to reconnect um, with that. So these are some questions that you might ask yourself. And then here are um, some other questions that you might ask yourself that can get to a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of, of what really um, you can see yourself doing in, in, uh, in work and in a career. 
and take a notebook and uh, perhaps take maybe seven days or 14 days to give yourself the chance to brainstorm around your answers around these type of questions and write anything that comes to mind at this point. This is an opportunity for you to think really big, to imagine all the possibilities without stopping yourself. And as you start doing this, what will you'll start noticing themes and patterns that keep re, uh, emerging. And eventually a, a vision is going to start forming about how, what you see yourself doing in the future and how you uh, wanna direct your career moving forward into the future. And this can be um, a very powerful experience. So this is a, a reflective way to, um, to imagine, uh, get clear and imagine what you wanna do next in your future. And then next, what I would encourage you to do as part of this, as this process is to get clear about your goals. Oftentimes, uh, people express that they want to do something else. When they're asked, what, what do you want to do? I just want to do something else. This is a chance for you to define what that something else could look like. Uh, there are many different goals that you might identify for yourself, but these are a few. So when, when you are thinking about something else, are you thinking that you want to do the same role in the same company or organization? Do you want to stay in the same industry? Or do you want a new role? Uh, within the same company or organization? Do you want a complete change? Do you want a, a completely new role in a new company or organization in a different industry? Or are you really not sure right now? It's important to get clarity here because the approach that you take here, the approach that you take here is going to inform everything else that you do uh, moving forward. And if you are not sure, one way that I'm, someone has asked if I can do the next, the past slide again, real quick, I will try my very best to do that. Here. So one approach that you can take in getting clarity about your uh, career goal, your specific career goal is to do what I refer to as a job audit. And take, uh, a couple of weeks um, to just record everything that you do in your in your day. So starting on a Monday, all the activities that you do, the meetings that you have, um, the projects that you're working on, the people that you interface with, and give yourself five days to do that. And then go back and evaluate what in those five days that represent a typical you know work week for you. Do you enjoy the most? Do you wanna do more of? Do you wanna do less of? What is missing? And, and do an audit. And so, and then you can ask yourself, if I were to get more of this, would there be an opportunity in this company? If I were to do less of this, can I do this somewhere else? I mean, so if you, as you can pinpoint, the more clear you can be to pinpoint, not only what you, how you prefer to spend your time, how you're actually spend your spending your time, and then what the gap is, the more clear you can be about that, the more confident you will be in, in bridging that gap. And then you can move into then look, getting some more insight into the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you're bringing to the table. Okay. And this is where um, career assessments can also be very helpful. So in addition to the reflective and uh, activities and the auditing activities, career assessments can be helpful. Oftentimes people jump to the career assessments, but they don't do the reflection. I think that both are very important and play a vital role in helping you to determine what you're gonna do moving forward. So that when you start talking with people, when you start having those uh, reality check conversations in informational interviews, when you're looking at doing research, you have a point of reference and you have a clearer sense of what it is that you're looking for. And it may be attached to job, job titles at this point. So assessments like the Clifton Strengths, the Skill Scan, um, Strong Interest Inventory, the Myers-Briggs, these are the ones that I use um, most. I typically will start off with a, a Career Values Inventory, uh, the Strong Interest Inventory, and the Skill Scan. And that's really 
a, a sort of a trifecta of career assessments that provide some really great and concrete insight for people and they help to begin to bridge. Well, I wanna do these kinds of things. I wanna help you know, these kind of people in this kind of way. I wanna make this kind of impact. And these are the knowledge, skills and abilities that I have to do that. Where can I do this work? Maybe it's in the nonprofit sector, maybe it's in higher education, maybe it's in the public sector and the government or in um, high tech, whatever sector it may be, these career assessments can help you to make that bridge. And then you can move into, these are some resources that I have available. I just wanted to show you a representation of some of the resources that I have created to help people get clear on that. And then you can move into a little bit more of getting a reality check. And I wanna pause here and encourage you that uh, this is a sort of a mindset uh, shift that your future at this point is a, is a blank slate and you can design it to be anything that you want it to be. And I wanted to provide, share this encouragement with you because I remember being at a place where I didn't see a future in front of me and I had, uh, I didn't know what to do and I'm staring at this blank slate and I, I was asking myself, well, what do I do with all of this? And so those reflective exercises along with career assessment insight allowed me to start filling up those pages. And as I started filling up those pages, I began to get energized and encouraged and a sense of confidence about, about the future. And I also wanted to you know, share around this that it's about reframing and refocusing. So your job or your career is, is really a vehicle that will get you the life that you want. So yes, we need to work, we have bills to pay, but it's not always just about getting a job. It's, it's also about having a meaningful life as you define it and your job and your career is a part of that. So if you kind of uh, flip that a little bit, shift it a little bit, your focus a little bit and, and, and focus on, defining the life that you want to have and what are those elements, those pillars that are going to enable you to have that meaningful life and your career is a part of that, it somehow gives you a shift in your mindset so that you feel that there are more possibilities out there for you and the possibilities that you see in front of you are more realistic for you to um, achieve. And so I would encourage you to take the time to do this because the time that you spend here is gonna make everything else that you need to do in your career transition a lot easier. I'm gonna uh, pause for questions uh, to see if anybody has any pressing questions real quick. And you, I think we're putting questions in the chat if anybody has any. Marka, I don't know if you want to answer this now, but there is one question that we got in, in the Q&A, and it was um, from an anonymous attendee saying, at your convenience, without providing confidential information, can you share maybe a client success story? It would, great, it would be great to hear about a successful transition by your clients into alternative careers. A description of hurdles overcome would be inspiring. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Um, actually, I can... I can, I have a few, but one that came to mind um, as I was preparing for this is a client that I had uh, recently, or within the last couple of years actually, uh, who was a uh, widowed client. She uh, had been widowed and when she was widowed, she uh, was, had young children. And uh, in her case, she was able to have a little bit of income for her, her children. And, uh, but her kids got to the age where they were adults. And so the income wasn't gonna, going to be there to, to care, keep the household going. And so I, I believe it had been about 17 years since she had worked. And so she came to me for help figuring out what to do next. And through this process um, of brainstorming, you know, what it was that she wanted to do next, she had uh, identified that she wanted to work in healthcare and she wanted to work in administrative support and healthcare is, is the job that she wanted to have. She enjoyed being in that environment, uh, being a part of, you know, caring for people and being a part of that whole system of care. 
but she didn't have any experience in that area and she didn't have any recent work experience. So we decided, hey, why don't you just go and get a job so you can get reintegrated into the workplace uh, so you can get re, um, uh, so you can re revisit what it's like to just show up to work on and, and do all of that. And she found a seasonal job and I didn't hear from her for a while after that, but she found a seasonal job and she came back to me a year later and she said, you were right. You know, getting back into the job market in some form uh, gave me not only income, but it also helped me to build my network. It helped me build my confidence It helped me build my work skills. And now I applied for the job that I said that I wanted and I got that job. So that was a, uh, an example of how this can be helpful. And so it's not always about getting that long-term you know, dream job right away, but it's about setting that foundation, knowing what it is that you want to do and then taking steps incrementally to get there. So that was, um, that was one example. It's quite a lot to re-enter the job market after a break. Uh, it's quite a lot to navigate through trauma and then re-enter uh, re the job market in some way. And so that was what she had to work through confidence, lack of confidence, how do I explain my gap, all of those kinds of um, concerns we had to work through. Mm -hmm. Someone has a question also in the chat. As you work through these reflective questions, um, uh, how do you, is it possible to be all over the place understanding that? Yes, I think that it's important to just brainstorm everything because what you'll end up seeing is that as you start brainstorming in these key areas, what you wanna be, what you wanna do, what you wanna have, your skills, your knowledge, abilities, you're gonna start, eventually you're gonna start coming back around and you're gonna start noticing repetition, repetition. And when you start repeating, then you know there's something there. So it's, it's okay to do that. And then you might also consider as if you're brainstorming at a certain point, you might categorize those things, take a pause and reflect. What do I see? What my sister's in data analytics, marketing uh, data analytics. And she always says, what is, let the data tell you what to do. So as you're looking at all your brainstorming, what do you see there? What do you see are common threads among that? Oh, I really enjoy helping people. Oh, I really like solving these kind of problems. I really like when I can be a sounding board for people. Okay. And so it, this is hard because we're, we don't, we're not really trained to reflect. So reflection is a skill. The ability to reflect is a, is a skill you can develop. And this is a new skill that you might develop to help you um, redirect your career. Okay. All right. Hopefully that answered that question. Okay. All right. So here we go. The next um, part that you want to, to, to do is really, um, so again, the, the front end on the exploration, uh, excuse me, on the uh, reflection, I think that's really important. And again, I'm a, very, I'm a strong believer in that being the foundation, but at a certain point, you have to want to pull the pieces together and you want to see, well, where, where can I realistically do the work that I desire to do? And that's where career exploration can come in come into play and this will help you to reality check, get a reality check uh, for your idea. So as you are starting to e imagine what could be possible for you, you want, you're gonna be curious about this. Uh, you're gonna, can I really do this? Am I really gonna be able to make a living? And what is this gonna be gonna look like? For some of you, this may not be one job. Again, this could be a, a, a career or a lifestyle that you create for yourself and your job is one component of it. And this, the, the reflection and the research will help you to get that clarity. Many times when you are going, when you research, when you start researching opportunities and you can do the searches online, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But when you start talking with other professionals, you're going to begin to see that professionals who are satisfied with in the, their careers and the work that they're doing, don't get their satisfaction solely from the job that they're doing. It's a whole lifestyle that they've created for themselves that works together. Their job is important and meaningful. It allows them to apply and it supports some of their values, but they might also volunteer outside of that. They might have other interests and activities outside of work and the totality of that enables them to, to be um, very, um, satisfied in the work that they do. And this is where you can start seeing how people pull these pieces together. This is where you might also begin to make those meaningful connections that you're gonna 
going to need to get to the next. Perhaps you might identify a mentor or a group of people that are going to steward you through uh, your transition. And this is a perfect opportunity for you to get involved in various um, organizations, perhaps, whether they're charitable organizations or uh, create related to your, your particular interest. Your alumni association is a great place for you to get plugged in, or maybe even just to pursue an interest. I had a client uh, not long ago who went through all of this process. And one of the things that she identified was that she wasn't pursuing her interests enough. It was just work, work, work. And she wasn't pursuing her interests enough. And she had a particular interest in um, her culture, art and film in her culture. And so she took, uh, joined a group, uh, a, a, just a social group around that. and. She got a chance to read, you know, uh, things that were interesting to her and talk with other people who shared that interest and watch films, go to art museums around her interests. And it completely energized her for her career. And she started seeing the connection between what she thought were se uh, separate interests and her career and possibilities. And she reported back to me that she was um, just reinvigorated with her career. So this is where you can help these uh, move together. In researching the possibilities, so you have brainstorm um, factors that were important to you, done the career assessment. So you have sort of a bank of keywords, if you will, and a career counselor can help you pull these together. Use LinkedIn and Google to do keyword searches, and you will see the kinds of jobs that might come up, companies might come up, uh, people who are doing jobs and describing what they do in similar ways that you brainstorm. And you can begin to see possibilities and attached to specific jobs, industries, and companies as a, pos as, as a way for you to maybe go from where you're at to where you wanna be. So it gives you a little bit more concrete um, information to go from. So you're still gonna get to those job titles, but like I mentioned before, go beyond the job titles initially and then circle back to those to begin and to continue with your exploration. And I also um, find it very helpful with the career assessments. The reports will help you to generate some con concrete um, job titles related to your interest, uh, your natural strengths, your personality characteristics, your skills. And again, when you do those, you'll start to see different themes emerging. If you've done the reflection activities along with the career assessments, I have found that it, it provides um, you with a, a greater sense of confidence because Part of it came just from you and it was reinforced by, by what the assessments say as opposed to um, the, other, the other way, okay? And then before, um, these are the, some of the resources that I use particularly, no, no surprises there. And then before you, you move um, on, you have at this point now get, uh, gotten a good idea. Let's say you've done all the reflection, you've done the career assessments, you started doing your, your research. You will have a, a probably a better idea about what you want to do moving forward. Um, you've started defining what you really want in your life and your career. Perhaps you've even gotten some possible uh, job titles, uh, roles, fields, functions, and maybe even companies that you might desire to work um, with or for. And so at this point, you're, you would need to make at least a preliminary decision about what you're going to do next you'll have a little bit more clarity at this point and hopefully more confidence. You may still have some doubts and, and, and that's okay as well. You're gonna have some doubts. You're not really sure. You're not gonna know what, how, what the outcome is gonna be until you start taking some steps until you, until you get there. And that's totally normal in this process. But what I advise you to do then is to break it down and break down um, your next steps and your goals into uh, shorter um, timeframes. When I am, uh, oops, when I'm working with, with my clients, they might have a, a big goal that they're working towards. So for example, a recent client that I was working with had a, a really big goal to create a, a creative, a, a community for a creative um, social workers, social workers who used um, creative uh, tools like um, vision board, writing, uh, painting, those kind of methods to come together as a source of healing for themselves and for others and wanted to create this whole ecosystem of people uh, for people to be able to do that. 
well, in the meantime, was in transition with uh, housing and all of that. And so the big goal was to get there, but the immediate goal was to, to stabilize um, the present situation. And so by breaking it down into her, the big goal into, well, what do I need to do now to get there? It allowed um, for my client to pinpoint a, a, a 30, 60, 90 day plan to take action on that would enable her to stabilize the present situation, but also feel and be making real progress towards the longer term goal. And so I encourage people to break down their goals into meaningful chunks. And I, I shared this with you. Um, these are some of the tools that I use to help people start formulating, making decisions and formulating their action plans, pulling all the insight together into a summary document. So you have everything all in one place and, and, and mapping out your network. So as you're getting, getting better, um, uh, more clarity about what it is that you wanna do, then who in your network can help you to get there, whether they can provide you with insight, whether they can provide you with leads, or they can make you make introductions for you. Coming up with a specific job search um, or a career action plan. And again, having that big goal and a big long-term plan, but breaking it down into 30, 60, maybe 90 day chunks there and um, using the SMART goal uh, method there. And then implement your plan and adjust your plan as, as you need to. So that is the um, other piece. So I talked a, lo a lot about how to get clarity and define your goals, um, how to uh, research the opportunities and get a reality check around that, and then moving into making a decision, creating an action plan for yourself and uh, taking action on that plan. So, and there are the realities of making a career change. And this is some a little bit about mindset and motivation. The reality of making a career change is that it's going to take longer than expected. Um, I have people come to me quite often, and when I ask them, you know, why, what's their time frame by make, for making a change, and they say, "I'd like to be in a new new job and a new career in and in a 30 days, maybe 60 days." And that is can be possible, but most likely it's going to take a little bit longer. And there are it's unpredictable the people that you might wanna to talk to, the opportunities that you might per, wanna pursue may not be available when you want them to be available. People may not respond as quickly. And the clarity in, in, uh, that you are looking for may take a little bit longer than you expect to, to really form for you. And that, that's all, those are all normal, but this is the realities of changing careers. So how do you stay motivated? I encourage uh, you to focus on the parts of, of the process that you can uh, influence that you can control. And what you can control is the community of support that you form around yourself. You can, uh, you can control the mentors that you um, engage. You can uh, control how you care for yourself, your, your exercise, your diet, your, um, how well you, you eat, all of those kinds of things you can influence. I encourage you to track your accomplishments as you engage in this process track your accomplishments as you go through. And if you're working, you know, still in the workplace, track your daily, weekly accomplishments, because that's going to give you the encouragement and the motivation that you need when, when things get hard. Visualize yourself already being where you want to be. Be, do, and have, and, and create a visual uh, for yourself so that it becomes an anchor, a beacon to where you want to be. And you uh, 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 reframe and affirm. So those be, do, and have statements you can transform those into I statements and affirmations that I am resilient. I am qualified to do the work that I wanna do. I am well paid for the um, skill, my knowledge, skills, and abilities. All of those you can turn into um, I, I statements and affirmations that'll help you to stay motivated and encouraged. And you can journal about all of these. So I, I believe in, in these um, strategies and these practices. I, I, do them for myself and I know that they work. And there is a part of this where you're gonna to have to trust the process. Um, take those steps, uh, baby steps into the unknown and trust that if you do this consistently, you will get to the place where you want, want to, to be in your career. So I'm gonna pause there and um, for our Q&A time. If anyone has any questions and I see. Um, great. I think we got a question earlier in the chat from Paulina. 
Um, and her question was, how is your advice or how would your advice be different for people who want to change industries completely versus people who want to find a different role within the same general industry? Um, do they want, um, if you want to change, both of those are, um, are going to require clarity of a focus and are going to require um, a strategy where you're going to want to get visibility for uh, your professional um, accomplishments and your professional abilities. And so the strategy, if you're wanting to get a new, a new role in your, in your same company or new role in um, a different industry, is that what was the question? Yeah. So I have found it's, it's really, uh, not really, but it most importantly is about getting that visibility and being able to very clearly demonstrate and articulate that you have the knowledge and the skills and abilities transferable knowledge, skills, and abilities to do the job, as well if you're moving from one industry to, industry to another, you also have to demonstrate your genuine in, interest and enthusiasm for the new industry. Does that make sense? And then there's a question I see in the chat that someone asked about how do you get the energy and confidence to get back into the game following a tra traumatic grief? One day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> one moment at a time. I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm speaking from experience. So that was an example of a client, but that client also represents me. So I, um, if you read my full bio, um, you'll see that I was, I'm, I was also um, widowed unexpectedly and I was not uh, working full time at that time. And I had to re-enter the job market really quickly. So, and I had to redirect my career there because I, we had a whole other life plan. And so, I think that one is you have to hold space for your grief and there are grief support organizations that you can get involved with. Um, you can go to grief support groups, grief counseling and um, get involved with addressing that grief. And little by little over time, you will begin to develop your confidence. And quite honestly, um, after I had, had become widowed, I also was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And so I was dealing with grief as well as my own medical issue. And so, I, I was overwhelmed with all of that. And I found myself, you know, at the crossroads and I came to talk, talks like this, Tony Robbins, Oprah, and they all have these rah-rah things. And they talked about all the things that they did. And a lot of this was this reflective journaling. And I said, well, if it worked for them, if it worked for anybody else, I'm going to give it a try. I'm just going to give it a try. And I sat down and I asked myself all these questions that I shared with you. I asked myself these questions over and over and over again until I started noticing themes and so, until I started noticing a vision was forming and started building my confidence that there was something good that was possible for me in my future. I did the career assessments. Well, what are my skills today? What am I most interested in doing? Who, who do I wanna help? What problems do I wanna solve? And again, a clearer vision started forming. You have to give yourself time to do this. It did not happen overnight. It took me a couple of years to really reimagine what was possible for me. Okay, a few more questions. Um, Mark, I know you shared a, a lot of helpful tips and tools and um, really gave an outline of where to start. But for those eager to get started, where do you suggest um, they do that? Or um, what would be their first thing to really start with? Sure. And there's a, a question in there that kind of goes along with that. So a person who's considering a major career change from an uh, entrepreneur to potentially becoming an attorney. And they wouldn't be attending uh, law school until 43. So advice on pursuing careers that require going back to school at this age. So I, I would say I have two kind of examples of that that are really interesting. In, in fact, yesterday I went to a retirement party of someone who changed careers at 53. So went back and uh, finished their undergraduate degree at 53 and then went on to graduate school and entered a, brand, a completely different career, went from textile industry into higher education. And so what they did was they first figured out what it was that they wanted to do. And for them, uh, getting that graduate degree was going to enable them to do the job that they wanted to do. And they began to build their, their professional network and so um, when they were in their undergraduate and graduate program, they got involved 
with on-campus activities, alumni activities, and professional groups that enabled them to build their network and to build their uh, industry-specific uh, skill set and resume so that when they got out of their graduate program, they were well positioned for the job opportunities that they would want. So that is a strategy. And then my mom's a great, another great example. She went back and got her graduate degree at 50. And she moved from one function to a different function, one company to another company, and finished her, uh, the rest of her career there. So get clear, build your network. <laughs> Um, we have some questions in the Q and A. Uh, one of them is if you could go back to the slide um, you use as a resource for job searching. Uh, it was a few slides before talking about the areas you can control. Can you go back to that slide? And that was from Nikkel. This one. Um, resources for job searching. Uh, did I have re? I don't know if I had any resources for job searching, but for career think, exploration. Yeah, I think it would, might have been this one. Okay. Thanks. We'll leave that on there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, another question we have from an anonymous attendee. Do you have advice for people who are feeling burnt out in their current role and realize a change is needed in their current role? What are some aspects to consider whether to stay in the current role or to switch to a different company? So I will go back. Yes, that's a great question. I will go back. Um, First, uh, I would go back to the um, activity, the job audit activity. So I obviously work with people who come to me feeling burnt out in their career. And sometimes they, they, it's a, an overwhelming feeling of burned out, but they don't know why. They just are, are they, it, maybe it's their boss, but I don't, I don't really know. They, they may not actually be able to pinpoint it. So if you're not really too sure, and even if you think you are, I would go back and do the job audit and really evaluate what actually is going on and then assess if you could change one of these pieces, what would that piece be? It may not be changing the job. It may be changing the job. It could be taking on different projects, having a conversation about doing different types of work within the scope of your actual job. I can't really say, but I would encourage you to do that assessment and pinpoint what's really not working and then come up with a strategy to address what's not working. And if that looks like a new job, then what is that new job? You have some more insight into what that new job could be or that you would want it to be. And then you can organize your efforts around getting that. And your efforts would be your network, your efforts would be built, uh, updating your resume, cover letter, your LinkedIn profile, uh, everything that you need to do to support what you wanna do moving forward. Great, thank you. I think along the same lines of, you know, feeling burnt out or um, the idea of job searching just alone being daunting and stressful, um, how, how can the viewers today stay encouraged or motivated throughout this process? Because it does seem like it does take some time and it is a bit of, um, could be a little bit of, you know, trial and error. So what would you suggest for that process? Right, so it's an art and not a science, right? So I presented a little bit of a process and a framework, but and in this though, there are some things that you're gonna have to just try. So I, one of the things that I do that keeps me motivated is I surround myself with a positive, a positive environment. So, and what that means is I am constantly encouraged by quotes. <laughs> and the stories of other people who have overcome. So I mentioned, you know, trust the process. That's something that I'm telling myself all the time. A couple of weeks, I'm learning Korean. And if any of you have ever learned another language, Korean is very hard <laughs> there and it's very daunting. And, at, and anytime you endeavor to do something new, initially you, you kind of ramp up and it's, it's, it's um, energizing because you're, the, the ramp up, you're learning a lot of new things, but then you plateau. And then you're, it's incremental progress. And so another quote that I use that motivates me and others is slow progress is progress. And I encourage you again to track your accomplishments and, and to journal about the things that are going well and, and to revisit that. So it, there isn't any magic to all of this, but it's really about creating a positive environment for yourself that will keep you motivated and encouraged. 
You can also, uh, it, it's also helpful to surround yourself with other like-minded people. You know, it's easy to find people who are, uh, you know, who complain and about things not going their way, but find the people who can bring you hope and who could bring you encouragement. Not that they have everything figured out, but that they're willing to try and help other people do it as well and walk in tandem with those kind of people. Along those lines of, you know, the, you know, finding your network, uh, we got a question from Edgar. Do you have any tips on networking and reaching out to people on LinkedIn? It can be intimidating, especially for um, some introverts. Yes, well, I am an introvert. <laughs> and so <laughs> believe it or not, I'm an introvert. And I can share with you how I approach uh, LinkedIn and networking in general, especially from an introvert's perspective. So I first about mindset. I approach it as an opportunity to learn and connect from another person. And so sometimes or often what I see happens is when people think about networking, they think about, I need to contact this person to get a job. And, and so that's a long, that's a heavy lift for someone that you don't actually know. <laughs> and so my approach is, LinkedIn is really helpful with this, is that before you write to someone and ask them to share their life story with you and all the tips that they have to help you get the job that you want, why don't you follow them and see what they write about first and, and engage with their content that way and, and start forming perhaps a, a, a relationship with them that way, an engagement with them that way. And eventually an opening is going to emerge for you to reach out to have a deeper conversation with that per person. And so whether you're introverted or not, the best approach is to take that slow and steady approach to engaging with people, but also in, in, in the whole process as a, as a whole. And I found that that has worked really well is first you just, you follow the person, you get to see their content, you get to see what other people who are connected with them are writing and talking about. And when you see that there's a mutual interest there, then you might transition over to reaching out for an actual conversation. Great advice. I have a cheat sheet that I use that I give to my clients. Sorry. <laughs> um, this one is from an anonymous attendee, but I think it's a good question. Um, and I think you might have touched on it a bit, but the question is, what would you suggest for someone who wants to completely change their career, location, and lifestyle, but worry about financial stability and ensuring that they will have the funds to support that change? That is an excellent question. So I'm one of the career counselors and career coaches that um, encourages and, and spends time with my clients to, to get them to think about practical matters. Because the reality is, is that if you don't feel like you could pay your bills, you're not going to be motivated to do everything else that you need to do. So get real with how much money you actually need to, to, to live now and through the transition and then what your target is. So sit down and get a budget together, get real, real with the real numbers that you need for your life. And you have to do that. I, it's, in, it's vital. And not only do you want to look at what do you actually need, like what's the, the minimum that you need to be able to, to sustain the lifestyle that you want? And then what the next level is, well, what do you want? Like what would make you feel good and a little bit more comfortable, right? And then go with the next level, your ego money. <laughs> you know, so you have your baseline, I need this. Middle, this is what I would really like to feel a little bit more comfortable and secure. And then this is what would make me feel like a rock star. Okay, and do that. And once you get specific on that, that's going to guide the decisions that you make and what you do in that complete transition. Okay, and again, realizing that making a complete transition, moving to a new location, starting a brand new job in a brand new industry in a brand new role is going to take time. It's going to take time. And so define what that's gonna look like for you, define what it is that you actually need, put a plan together. It's gonna to be a long-term plan with short-term milestones and then start working those milestones. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's any, any more slides that you have left to finish off today's presentation. If you do, I'd like for you to go through those for the sake of time. 
Um, but if not, you can choose to answer one more question oh, up to you. Just one last um, slide that I wanted to share, and this it goes along with an encouragement, right? And I think this is a great way to, to end it. So again, one of the ways that I stay encouraged and one of the ways that my clients stay encouraged is through quotes and affirmations. And this is one quote by Arthur Ashe that I, I go to quite often. And it's start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. So one of the ways that people get overwhelmed in the, in the process of making a career change or even launching a job search is thinking that they have to do everything all at once and giving equal weight to everything that needs to happen. And so I encourage you to take the slow and steady approach. It, it works. <laughs> and be realistic about you know, your energy, how much time you have to take. And start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Break it down into small, meaningful steps that you can take action on to build your confidence and gain momentum in the process. So thank you. That is um, That concludes what uh, my remarks. And so I would encourage you, those are great questions, excellent questions. I love those yeah. questions, um, very thoughtful. And I would encourage you to reach out and connect with me. I have a resource page that you, there's a link there to the resource page that you'll get and um, you'll, they'll send it through email as well. And there is my, um, my handles online, I'm on every platform. So you, I'm easy to reach and easy to find. And even if you Google my name, I will come up my smiling face <laughs> because there aren't that many Markel Morrises out there. <laughs> so um, thank you again, um, Joseph, for inviting me to come and share my encouragement for finding an alternative uh, career and really staying motivated in the process. It's, it is overwhelming. It can be daunting, but it is, yeah. it is doable. And that's why I do what I do because I know it is possible um, with a uh, focus and some dedication. Thank you, Markel. Um, everyone join me in thanking Markel for joining us today. Uh, before we close, I'd actually like to throw in the chat a link to our upcoming career coaches webinar taking place on July 21st. It's a resume writing for career changers. Um, and then also once this webinar ends, you will get a pop-up um, prompt that will um, prompt you to fill out a follow-up survey uh, to give your feedback on today's webinar, uh, letting us know how uh, Markel's information um, and the information she shared um, was helpful for you today. Um, again, Markel, thank you for joining us and go Bruins.